So I reached out to a small cafe in Camas, downtown Camas specifically, called Hidden River Roasters to interview them about what it takes to create a small business and to just get a little bit more insight of the Camas community. The rain stopped just in time. Here it is. since 1997. I practiced here for from 2007 till 2019. I'm a retired chiropractor. Okay. Um, and then I decided to do coffee. I've been roasting since 2015 and then started officially in 2016. We opened this in 2018. And here we are on the busy street in Camas. I did a little bit of digging before I came here. I've been noticed that uh, you guys started this business over a silly little Christmas gift. Yes. So, 2015, my wife bought me a coffee roaster, just a little coffee roaster that big, did a quarter pound at a time. And little did she know that I would be like, this is awesome and I can do it better. And so from that, I three weeks later, I ordered a bigger one that was did a pound at a time within a few months i was ready to launch and i built a uh, i built an extension off the back of my house and i started it while she was gone visiting her brother so that i didn't get in trouble and so then i ordered my first commercial roaster we roasted off the back of the house and now we have a full separate facility where we roast and we can we roast 250 to 300 pounds an hour now so we are uh, from my stovetop to where we are now Starting a business takes a lot of time and due diligence and really just a lot of motivation. So what and a really lot of just, insanity. Really, what just kept your motivation to keep going and to really just open this beautiful location? So really it comes down to once you've got that vision, you just never let go of it. Because you're going to come up against stuff, which, okay, fine. But you just see them as a challenge instead of a roadblock. You know, and it's just one of those where it's like, I just refuse to quit. Since you've been in Camas, like, what have you noticed about the community? What specifically made you want to open up this shop in Camas? So we've been here such a long time that we've seen it through its times when it was actually very, very sleepy. When I first moved my chiropractic practice downtown here, I had my choice of seven, eight, 10, 12 spaces, any of them, really anything you wanted. And then with, by the time now, like say now, Finding a space to lease at Camas, in downtown Camas here, is next to impossible. You have to be right place, right time, or know somebody, right? So yeah. it's like we've seen it come from this sleepy little, not really desired place to we have some we have awesome restaurants. I mean, you can find every kind of food, and it's the best of the best. Breakfast, go to Natalia's. They serve our coffee for one, but holy cow. They're awesome. They're Mexican spot down here. Nation yeah, Mesa, Mesa is amazing. And they're customers of ours, proud to say they serve our coffee, but also they are best Mexican food. I grew up in Yakima, so I know Mexican food. <laughs> and then you've got GOW, awesome beer and, and burger. So it's just, it's an awesome community. Yes, you know, your name is Hidden River Roasters. How did you guys come up with the name and how do you really just stand out from the competition? So the name came from, I had a really rough day at work and I was heading home and I, I used to have to drive over Lackamas Lake on my way home, right over the little bridge. Thing. And so I look over and I noticed the water was super duper low. It's like, holy cow, there's there's a creek, there's, you know, there's a river down there. Yeah. And which you normally can't see, it's the old Lackamas Creek and it still flows in its original channel. But they lower it so much, like turn into uh, what's now the Acorn and the Oak. Um, it used to be Lakeside Chalet. I turn into there, go park and I walk out there and it's kind of like zoned out on that. Uh, that the river there, right? And I'm like, holy cow, that's that's really cool. And 20 minutes later, my wife comes, she's like, are you okay? And I, my commute was five minutes, so it's like, okay, did you drive out the bridge or whatever, you know? So I'm like, oh, no, no, no. So then I just start thinking, and I was like, like I said, I had a really bad day, so I spent some time praying on the way home. And 
I honestly, I don't know if it was an audible voice or not, but I heard Hidden River Roasters. So I was like, what? You know, it's like, but that was it. It's like, holy cow, that's right. Because it's like, it's that secret place that kind of just takes you away. Maybe nobody else knows is there, but that's what I want this to be is, you know, that place where people can escape and just, you can get away. And, you know, that's why also we do only specialty grade coffee, do only 100% Arabica beans. You never burn it. You'll never find bitter burn. Then that's what sets us apart. These are phenomenal beans. And we only work with direct and or fair trade. So I can literally call up any one of our farmers. I mean, they're not my farmers, but we consider them part of our family. Uh, I could literally call up any one of them and talk to them yeah. if I spoke better Spanish still. Um, but really, I mean, I really could. And that's how close we are to these small family co-ops that we buy our beans from. So, but, you know, I like to think we're our kind of unspoken tagline that we've put on all of our paperwork and everything is like, is uh, changing the world one bean at a time. It, it seems silly to you and me, right? As we grab a cup of coffee. That cup of coffee took a lot of work. It's a pretty harsh environment to get here where we just get to enjoy it, right? And, and so it's like, it, it's part of everybody's daily routine. It is. And so for our people watching here, where can we find these, you know, beans? Where can we buy, you know, the bag of beans? Yeah, so you can either come into the shop here or you can go to hiddenriverroasters.com and we'll ship it. We ship all over the world. Uh, you can even ship it to your friends and family, wherever they're at. Um, so you can find us online or in the shop here in Canvas. Where do you see your business in the next five to ten years? So we're working on some very, very awesome things right now. Uh, we will be expanding, in fact, in about a month here, end of February. We're going to be uh, launching HRAT. HRAT is Hidden River After Dark. So we're going to start out with Friday, Saturday nights, and we'll be expanding, extending our hours till, uh, we might even do Thursdays and Sundays. We'll see how it goes. Till about 10 or 11 at night where we'll have beer, wine, cocktails, still coffee. And then our baker, because we have a bakery on site here, is awesome. doing a whole range of desserts for us. So oh, wow. basically we're going to be, be becoming, we're going to go from coffee house to a place to come and have awesome desserts oh, and amazing. drinks with your friends. We do have some food and stuff, but, and that's just coming in another three weeks. It's family friendly, although I do keep hearing from parents that I'm leaving the kids home. We're coming on a day. <laughs> One more thing to just kind of, you know, end this off. I just kind of wanted you to speak to the viewers directly yep. for anyone who's aspiring to open their own business. What kind of advice would you give them? So um, I actually do work with a lot of my consults as well, but I work with a lot of business uh, people who are, want, I call them entrepreneurs, right? And I know that I'm not trying to be mean, but it's like, do it. You're yeah. not an actual entrepreneur until you do it. Once you take that first step, welcome to the club. But don't sit there and just wait on the I'm going to's. Don't get stuck on I'm going to. Get stuck on I'm doing right now. Take that first step. Get a name. Get a concept. Write a vision. And then get your business license. It's 15 bucks if you're in Canvas or 20 bucks maybe, right? So it's like, do it. Now you've got something to do, right? So it's like, and then do a budget. Uh, there's there's a ton of different systems out there, but take as little debt as possible, bootstrap it as much as you can, and you can look these terms up. And then also, you know, get a good allocation. There's a there's a system called Profit First, which is an awesome system. Um, I can't remember the author. I think it's Mike. It's Mike something. Look it up. Read that book. He did. He, he even says he didn't invent the system, but he put it in a, a tidy package and start there, go there. Manage your finances best you can because that is the one thing that will take a business down faster than anything is financial mismanagement. And it's hard, but it's worth it. You heard it here first. Thank you so much for your time. I really, 